Welcome to Oliver Gerald, your guide to the finer things in life. And yes, Bridgerton is to the Regency era what Fifty Shades of Grey is to s &M. It shows little understanding of the source material and is just flat out boring. Fifty Shades is the steamy romance where they spend the majority of the first movie negotiating a contract. Oh yes, whisper those riders and clauses oh so delicately in my ear. Bridgerton is the period drama where everyone spends a lot of time being perfectly respectable and the male leads find more excuses to go shirtless than Jacob from Twilight. Stop me if you've heard this before. A woman chafing at societal expectations has to fend off waves of suitors before meeting a rogue love interest. She's initially put off by his impish behavior and through contrived circumstances the two feign a courtship before eventually falling in love for real. It's the plot of half the Hallmark movies and dollar store romances, which aptly describes the Bridgerton novels. Bridgerton tells the story of two upwardly mobile families, the Featheringtons and the Bridgertons, and their various misadventures in Regency-era London during the so-called social season, when powerful families tried to play matchmaker and further the social standing at functions known as the Marriage Mart. Along the way, they have to navigate through complex rules of etiquette and passive-aggressive bobs and schemes from rival families and even from within their own. Initially, we follow the Bridgerton's prized debutante, Daphne, played by Phoebe Dynever, who has a perpetual expression of <laughs> and the fourth child of the Bridgerton clan <laughs> The fourth child of the Bridgerton clan manages to win the favor of the Queen, here played by Golda Rocheval. And speaking of which, rumor has it that the real Queen Charlotte might have been black or mixed race, and the show runs with that, with persons of color ubiquitous. From the servants to anonymous nobles, and even the queen and senior ambassador. That includes the dashing Simon Bassett, the Duke of Hastings, who arrives in town just in time to rekindle his old friendship with the eldest Bridgerton son, Anthony, and make Daphne all hot and bothered. Of course, at first, the two trade sharp quips with Simon determined to remain a bachelor and Daphne sick of the endless marriage mart. But if the anonymous social scribe Lady Whistledown does the Regency equivalent of canceling Daphne, the Bridgerton ingenue and Duke of Hastings come to an arrangement where they fake a courtship, a mutually beneficial arrangement where Simon can take himself off the market and Daphne's social standing can rise, having won the favor of a Duke. Daphne's brother Anthony takes a psychotic interest in her love life scaring off every potential suitor, except for the odious Nigel Bearbrook, who's older and just the most despicable human being on the planet. Yeah, good one, Anthony. I should point out that despite the presence of racial minorities and attempt to dispel stereotypes, the show leans on all sorts of stereotypes. The ugly women, ugly red-haired women no less, are of course the villains. That the eldest Featherington daughter passes out in front of the Queen is like Bill Pullman's character's food allergies in Sleepless in Seattle, an unforgivable sin. F*** those improper louts. And the most hideous looking man, the only one without a six pack, is a cretin and a pedophile. He's also physically and verbally abusive, and he's mastered the art of 19th century naked. And Simon might be mixed race, but he's otherwise the living embodiment of a block of wood. The Fabio from the cover of every romance novel, and just as vapid. The show takes shallow material and tries to liven it up with racial minorities and modern music, like a weird mix of A Knight's Tale and Hamilton thereby proving that mediocrity knows no racial bounds. Most of the characters are as shallow as a kiddie pool, and even the reveal of Lady Whistledown's true identity is an afterthought. You can definitely tell this was written and adapted by a woman, with the hunks as complex as their washboard abs. That Simon and Daphne end up together is a foregone conclusion, and the show is saturated with modern sensibilities. From a gossip writer holding an inordinate amount of sway in early 19th century London, 
She plays the queen like a harpsichord to 21st century feminist ideals, like Daphne's line that you have no idea what it is to be a woman, what it might be like to have one's entire life reduced to a single moment. You have expected to end with Daphne founding the National Organization for Women and lobbying for women's suffrage and the abolition of the monarchy. The show begins to make a lot more sense when you realize it was produced by Shonda Rhimes, who helmed Grey's Anatomy, the crown jewel of all cheesy romances. Even the Lady Whistledown revelation, which I wouldn't dare spoil, hits with the explosive force of a mouse's fart, which sums up the show. A tiny little stinker. A show about class privilege is great. After all, my favorite pastime is watching poor people fight to the death. But not if it's as riveting as contract negotiations. So I rate Bridgerton two silver spoons out of five. Be sure to show your appreciation for my efforts with a like. And I shall return to educate the great unwashed masses and all those of good letters and reading on the finer things in life and delightful cuisine.